All right, it's Riz. It's Jeff Burton backstage at Point Fest with Eric and Jeff from Stone Temple Pilots. All right, how you doing today? You Good, seem, how are you? You seem like a, you're like a morning radio show where you're all a amped lot up of, on caffeine. Did you know I do a morning radio show? Oh, you do? Yeah. All right. And a lot of cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Uh, good morning. Actually, good afternoon. good afternoon. Hi. It's kind of morning. That's why to I'm me, commenting yeah. on that. Yeah. Uh, so, how have the show's been so far? I mean, I mean, Jeff's the new guy. So, what uh, what hazing has been going on, or any? Do you ever see a uh, Full Metal Jacket? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Bars boy. of soap and yeah, socks. No, we haven't been doing that. But I just wondered if you saw the movie. <laughs> of course, I did. It's a great movie. He's any, just a big fan of the movie. I thought I thought we we're going to talk about Stanley Kubrick today because that. Oh, we can. Know, yeah, we can. What do you want to know? So oh, just how great he was. He was great. Yeah. He was great. No, no. Seriously, no hazing. We don't do any of that stuff still, no, or are we too old for that? Not, we're, no, we're not, never too old for that. So. <laughs> You're just not talking about it as well. Yeah, is. well, no, he's doing such a great job. So. He is. Yeah. He is fantastic. And, yeah. and one of the things about being the new guy, and I've been the new guy before, talk about uh, reaction from the fans, reaction from everybody else being that new guy. Yeah, uh, ultimately, it's that, that's not even up to me, so it's not something I can really control. All I can really control is going out there and just presenting STP the best of my ability, which is all I really try to do. I'm not trying to be anything I'm not. Just try to go up there and do the songs justice and do them the way, the way they made me feel when I heard them. You know, growing up and through my musical journeys, uh, you know, listening to Stone Temple Pilots was a was a, had a huge influence on me. So, who did you listen to growing up? Oh man, I Simon and Garfunkel, uh, Gordon Lightfoot, uh, the Carpenters. Uh, my dad's record collection was very was very instrumental in in my songwriting and my base of where I started from. And then you know as I got older and was in bands, uh, I was I was always the guitar player. I never wanted to be the center of attention. It's funny how that works out, but. Um, <laughs> Uh, it was when Core came out. It was the same year that it was the year I put down the guitar for a whole year and didn't even pick one up. And all I did was concentrate on vocals. And, and it wasn't because of them, but mm -hmm. it, they were. It just happened to be that same time. And, and front men like Scott and people like that. And just seeing how that how that worked and how great it was. And, and I'm like, you know what? That's that's what I want to do. So you know what's great is he was just mentioning his influences and when he was growing up with Simon Garfunkel and Gordon Lightfoot. And then you throw in Fleetwood Mac, Elton mm -hmm. John, stuff that was pop in the '70s mm -hmm. when I was a kid. It was more, more of a singer-songwriter kind of influence, even though that was considered pop radio. But right. that's what we all grew up on. So that whole concept of the songwriting, the presentation, that's deep in our DNA. So I think that making that, it making yeah. it about the song. And yeah, not, make it about the song. I think he's just kind of tapping into that. So the new record uh, came out last month. Which uh, congratulations! I mean, it sounds Thank great. You. The reviews have been amazing on it. I'm sure there was a was there a hesitation to even keep the name Stone Temple Pilots moving forward. No, not at all. I mean, was there much backlash? Or did you hear about it? I mean, what, I, didn't what hear, were... I didn't hear about it. I read about it, but I didn't hear about it. Yeah. So, I mean, so. <laughs> no one would say that to my face, but they, uh, <laughs> well, but, but the little trolls would be on there. Yeah, of course. Typing away, of course. Just going, all right, this of is course. cool. This so, is cool. What, was it always a thing like, hey, we're going to keep on moving forward with the stunt of a pilot's name? Or was there even a thought of, hey, you know what? Scott's not here anymore. Chester's not here anymore. No, we have such deep love and respect for him, but it was, uh, you know, far as moving forward that's a whole you know a whole different topic but uh we definitely every day you know we talk about chester and mm -hmm. talk about scott and how much we appreciate them as artists as mm -hmm. humans and you know what they contributed and well. the times we had together yeah um was there even a thought of saying this is i mean that's it it's over oh yeah so what was the decision to keep moving forward it's, it's just when you come out of the uh, depression, when you come out of the sadness. Because uh, there was a lot yeah, of sadness of course, and sorrow. Yeah. I mean, you think about everything. It's like, it's, it's just kind of like any breakup would be, where you're, just, you're totally depressed and you hate yourself, you hate everything, you hate the world, and mm -hmm. you just kind of come out of the haze and say, you know what? We have a lot to contribute. We have a lot of joy in what we do, and we want to share it with everybody. And there's a lot of people that still want to see it and appreciate the shows. Our shows have been sold out ever since. Uh, you guys look tremendously yesterday. happy on stage. Yeah. And hearing some of the stuff that, I mean, as a Stone Temple Pilots fan for many, many years, hearing songs that I've never heard played live before, like, you know, Silver Gun Superman. I've never heard that song played live before. Yeah, that's great. And then uh, we were just playing in Nashville last night. And the way he sang Atlanta. Atlanta's it, it was incredible. another great yeah. song. Yeah. You know, Sex and Violence I've, I haven't heard in a long, long time. You know, these are songs that have kind of been resting for a long time, and now you're bringing them back with your own yeah. style, which is, which is great. And everybody looks, everybody looks happy on stage. It's working. 
So far, so we're having good. a grand until old time. Yeah. And until the sock full, until the sock full of nickels. But, but the sock full of soap, you don't really get bruised too bad. Yeah. It's more of a deep internal bruise. Yeah. Oh, I could just so imagine you guys just throwing the blanket over and just holding them down on the bunk. Um, you're giving so, him ideas is what you're doing. I know. This is if he now. starts hearing Joker on the Coming bus, he's going to start to get scared. Right, it's fine. So, Jeff, for you, I mean, you guys went through a, what, a year and a half audition process. Yeah, it was a long, long time. So how did you come, come up with Jeff here? Jeff, he did not actually submit his uh, songs um, to us via, through the, uh, the internet. He the was... The other 20,000 plus yeah. people did. Uh, 20,000 plus? Robert was on tour with the Hollywood Vampires, and he was up in Detroit. Mm -hmm. And um, someone mentioned, you know, you got to check out Jeff over here. And then so we got a hold of Jeff. He came out and auditioned. And knocked it out. Just came in and just killed it. What were your thoughts on the way to that? To that uh, audition, to that first time? Well, when they first started their search, I was overseas with a completely different band doing my own thing. And, and, and so it, was, it wasn't something that I was like, oh my God, I got to go do that. You know, I'm like, they'll find a guy and it'll mm -hmm. be great. You know, and then I got back and it was months later and they still hadn't found anyone. I'm like... It almost felt like a sense of duty. You yeah. Know? Like, I have, to, I have to show up and come do this, you know? And if I didn't do it... I just have to get myself in the room. And right. Then, and then they can make the decision from there, and, and that's pretty much what happened. Yeah, if so. you didn't do it, you'd regret it. I would regret it's it It's like the time I went skydiving. Too. Somebody asked me to go skydiving, and I was like, yeah, eh, if I don't he, go, he I gave, did. Well, he yeah. gave Hated me those, uh, those bricks and said, just do it, Jeff. It's okay. <laughs> don't worry about yeah. it. Remember that? What songs did you sing for the audition? First song I sang was Piece of Pie because I didn't, I didn't, that was the one I knew the least. I'm like, uh -huh. I can get that one out of the way. And apparently I'm the only person who picked that song first, yeah? First, yeah. Because uh, I'm like, if I can do that song first and get it out of the way, it, it had nothing to do with the range of the song. Uh -huh. It had just to do with, I, just, I was really studying it on the way over there in the, in the Uber. <laughs> I'm like, let's get this one over with. And then, uh, and then from then on, it was, uh, man, I know uh, Trippin' was in there, um, Interstate Love Song, Big Empty maybe. I can't remember. There were seven of them, but... I'd have to go back and look through my uh, I don't know for notes. For us, it was kind of like speed dating, you know, there'd be mm -hmm. three, or four, three or four a day, and that'd be like seven or ten days straight. So it was like, so I don't remember exactly what songs, I just remember who was amazing. All right, so and 20. He was, he was amazing. 20,000 entries. How many times did you have to hear somebody attempt to do plush? Flush was a lot, but uh, trip Interstate was probably the. Oh, the that one was the one. The most. Yeah, and then they did a lot Vaseline of tripping too. Yeah, yeah. And Vaseline was in there too. Um, some were really outstanding. One one guy did a version of Flush, and it was all on keyboards. Oh, really? It was so great to hear because, like, when you just hear person after person, it's so disappointing. And, and you all, got the standout. Yeah, and all of a sudden you just, we just heard one that was just on keyboard, but he didn't sing. He just played the whole song. Uh, yeah, instrumentally, like, and it was like, oh, this is great. So we put it up on the website, like, thank you. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, just for something different, for yeah, God's sakes. Yeah, um, yeah it, it's, it's, it's amazing to see you guys out and, and playing shows and being happy on stage, and I cannot wait to see you guys uh, later on this evening. Can't wait to do it. There was a time when we never thought we would see this yeah. ever again, so this is fantastic. It's oh, fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, it's been going really good, too, man. They, uh, we've been doing quite a few festivals mm -hmm. this month, and uh, last night was in Nashville. And speaking of a uh, piece of pie. The way you sang that last night, it was uh, really incredible. It was like one of the few times where I just went, holy shit. Really? <laughs> As I'm playing. Yeah. Not for me or guitar or bass. You know, I've been hearing all that, you know, for, for 30 years. But to hear his vocals on that one, I was really blown Are away. Are you playing that tonight? I believe so, yeah. Damn, right? Damn. Yeah. It's, it's, be it's Eric. become a part of our, uh, our thing because it was the first song that we played together. So it's awesome. kind of become important for that, for that I reason. I can't wait. I can't wait. It's Eric, it's Jeff, it's Stunt Double Pilots playing today here at Point Fest. Backstage, it's Riz, it's Jeff for 105.7 The Point. All right. Thank you, brothers. Thank you.